Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Somebody recently asked whether the oil that was on the deck where the shells are stored to help facilitate sliding it around was flammable. This is an interesting question, something I never thought of. It is very, very bad to have fires on a ship. There's nowhere to go in an emergency. You've got to fight that fire. And so the Navy makes some very conscious decisions to make the ship as fireproof as possible. Uh, so first off, uh, most of the ship is built out of steel. Steel does not burn at uh, any reasonable temperatures you're going to encounter on, on uh, a ship. Aluminum will burn um, at high enough temperatures. We're going to go through some of the other sorts of things that are easy to find on a ship and test those out. So first off, I've got a piece of teak here. This blonde looking teak is the new stuff we're laying on the deck. In theory, wood is usually very flammable. However, teak was supposed to be selected because it is an oily hardwood that will not easily burn. Uh, so we're gonna test that using both the new stuff that we're laying right now, which is old growth Burmese teak, uh, and the type of teak that was removed from the ship that might be in worse condition. And uh, we're also gonna try and burn the uh, rubberized compound that this teak is bedded in and see how that goes. So we'll see if there's any difference between the, the old rotted teak and the new teak we're laying. We've also got uh, paint chips. This is an oil-based paint that was applied to the ship in the 1980s. So we're gonna see if that burns. The Navy knew that paint burned so early in World War II, following the attack on Pearl Harbor, they had the paint chipped out of all the interior spaces on their ships. Within a year, they, they said, that's, that's ridiculous. We, we got to paint the inside of the ship. Uh, and, and so they go back and do it. And it's just one of those things they accepted in order to have the steel survive uh, without corroding severely, you, you just have to paint it. Uh, so that was an acceptable risk they took. We're going to see how that burns. Uh, we've got a paint scraper here that has oil that's been scraped off the deck in uh, one of the shell handling decks. So we're gonna see how well that burns. A disclaimer on this one, the uh, oil has been sitting there since 1990. So it's picked up all sorts of road dirt. It, it's not the, the thin liquidy sheen that would be on the deck. Uh, but we're, we're gonna give it a shot and see how it goes. I've also got a uh, more modern can of the sort of lubricating oil that you would use on a firearm, uh, might have been used for cleaning the inside of guns, uh, and it's probably a pretty similar to what this should be fresh. So we're going to see if uh, this will burn differently than the stuff that's been sitting around. Finally, we've got some of the stuff that sailors wear. Uh, We've got the modern tactical blueberries, as they're called, that the Navy is just transitioning out of. Uh, so in theory, those are supposed to be made out of a non-burning material. We're just gonna uh, light that and see how it goes. And we've got an old uh, World War II era wool jumper, and we're gonna burn that and see if this is actually better than the old iconic uniform uh, or not. So we're just gonna go through this I'm going to light this off and hold it to the object for about 10 seconds, and we'll see if it lights off. And then uh, based on our scientific experience here, we'll move on to the next item and see how it goes. Definitely, definitely, definitely do not try this at home and light things on fire. Uh, we've got Firewatch standing by, uh, we're ready to go if something goes wrong. I'm the expert who's paid to do this. Don't, don't try it at home. We're going to start off by proving whether or not the teak will burn. So let's start with that. Okay. Uh, 
All right, we're getting some good scorch marks, but does it burn? You can see the fire from the uh, torch here. Have a look at that. As soon as I take the torch away, the fire goes out. So we are not seeing. Huh. Yeah, that, that's, uh, that's not even that hot. Let's uh, experiment with the old teak and the bedding compound they use. This is a rubberized, it's probably a roofing compound they got off the shelf that they used in the 80s. And it even still has some uh, deck under it, which has that uh, sort of rainbow pattern that uh, says that it's oily. So that might uh, burn. Let's give it a shot first the teak and then we'll flip it over and try the other side. Uh, again, we're seeing scorch marks here on the wood. And again, it goes away after I pull the torch out. Let's try the other side. All right, so there we go. After 10 seconds, uh, we are getting a little bit of burning here of the uh, rubberized compound. Interestingly, the scale on here did not burn, but the rubber on the edge is burning a little bit and it just burned itself out, it seems. No, no, it's still going there. You can see a little bit of a tongue of flame there, but it's certainly not igniting. All right, oh no, there's a fire on the ship. Whatever will we do? Damage control. Now that we've tested the stuff that we were pretty sure wasn't going to burn, let's try something that uh, probably should burn. Let's test the paint chip. Huh? Yeah, so that's interesting. You, you can see that it's melting and bubbling uh, and that there was even some burning around the edges, but when I took the flame away, it did not burn. And you can see the scorch marks around it, but underneath of it is still relatively intact. Well, for science, let's just burn this paint chip up. I don't want to have to carry it back onto the ship. All right, so that was definitely not the result we were expecting. This is the sort of paint that they were using on the ship in the 80s. And uh, under a relatively low heat source like this for a relatively brief period of time, we're not seeing uh, significant ignition. So, so that's good. Uh, presumably if we've got oil, an oil fire or powder, something burning at a higher heat for a longer period of time, uh, that paint will start to do more, but uh, yeah, it's just turned to uh, ash there. So that, that is not doing anything uh, significant on its own. It is not a fuel source if you're just uh, putting a fire to it. If you've tried to put your cigarette out on it, it's not going to cause the ship to go down in flames. So let's try the stuff that uh, provoked this video the lubricating oil from the deck that the shells slide on. That's interesting. It's turning back into a liquid. All right, we've got a little bit of fire that stays there after I take the torch away, but it's not like bursting out into flame like you would expect oil.
that's interesting. The teak is actually burning a little bit more than the oil itself. And that's, that's pretty much burned up there. So this was the stuff that's been laying there for over 40 years. It's picked up all sorts of dirt. Maybe it's just not as flammable as oil is supposed to be. Uh, and that's why we're getting this. Or maybe the Navy is smarter than uh, we give them credit for. So let's try some of this uh, modern day lubricating oil that's, that's a similar product. You can see it turns much more liquid when it's hot. It's not catching on fire, but it is boiling. All right, so we've got a little bit of fire there. No, nah, and it goes right out. So remember, this stuff is used for lubricating guns and especially handguns, rifles, things like that. What, what I use it for, um, those are getting up to a high heat as the action is cycling. You got metal and metal friction that this is trying to prevent. So it's not supposed to light on fire with that sort of heat. And that's the result we're seeing here. So, so far, none of this has been a uh, particularly good fuel source. So let's try what your sailors would be wearing. Now look at that, that is not only burning, but it is melting too. So the uniforms are the first thing that we've seen that, that actually uh, seem to be burning after we, we take the fire away. Oh, and that, that smells the worst of anything. It, it's like a melting plastic. I would not want to be wearing this in a fire uh, and then have it like melt to my skin. And look, it's, it's still going, it's still going. Yeah, so thank God the Navy doesn't issue these tactical blueberries anymore. And let's try our uh, World War II era wool uniform. See if we get a different result from this than we did with the modern uniform. Uh, you can see that the fire uh, did burn the uh, uniform, turned it into ash, but it went out as soon as we put the fire out. Let, let's try again, hold it a little bit longer. That's interesting. The top layer burned up completely. It didn't melt, it burned up, but the bottom layer of this seam is still perfectly intact. All right, so now we've got, no, it's burned itself out. All right. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but I think I would rather be wearing the wool uniforms than the modern plastic uniforms that will burn, but it doesn't uh, catch on fire and it doesn't melt to your skin, at least with the heats that we're using here. This has been our uh, science experiment on does the stuff on the battleship burn? Uh, at least with this relatively low heat for not too long of a period, we found that none of these objects uh, are particularly good fuel sources 
except maybe the modern plastic uniform, which of course would have never been worn on this ship. So what are some items that you think we should test in a future video like this? Are there any other sort of uh, materials that you think might be on the battleship that might burn uh, differently? Let us know in the comments section down below. Uh, maybe in a couple of weeks we'll try another video like this and see if we get similar results. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State and also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate the support you guys give the museum. It allows us to do cool stuff like this. You can also support us uh, at the link in the description below or by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about our channel and the museum. Thanks for watching.